Hello, we are the SpaceX fans and welcome to the SpaceX Show, the place where you can stay up to date with everything SpaceX. Today's episode, we're going to be taking a look at launchpad activity and other updates, various additions in Boca Chica, SM3 stacking, then testing to look forward to, and finally some SM4. We've got quite a bit to cover, so let's jump straight in. We're going to begin with some new arrivals in Boca Chica. These test stands arrived at the launch pad last week, but I don't believe these are for testing. These stands that have just arrived look very similar to what is used to construct and or move Starship parts in the yard. There has also been some action over by the test stand at the launch area. Engineers have been installing more components for what should be testing soon with SM3. There has also been an interesting addition to the test stand with this metal contraption being lowered into the middle recently. Then, these hydraulic rams were added and these will simulate the amount of thrust the engines would exert on the thrust puck and bottom dome. Apparently with SN2 there was a similar single hydraulic ram, but here we have three as SpaceX should be attaching three Raptor engines to SN3 at some point to then perform a static fire. Also, they've received some new tanks to the launch area, presumably for propellant storage. Not quite sure what is going on here yet, but some work is being done below Starhopper. There have been some interesting speaker looking objects attached to the bottom of Starhopper, then underneath, workers have poured some concrete. They've also been digging trenches and pits around the vehicle, so not sure what's going on here, but it's definitely interesting. Now, let's head over to the construction area where quite a bit has been happening. Here, we have further construction work going on with that new high bay or windbreaker looking building. I for one thought this building was going to be huge, but turns out it's actually quite small as you can see in this video. I can't quite put my finger on what it might be used for, I'm thinking maybe as a more permanent replacement for the tents? Let me know down in the comments what you think it could be. Next, the high bay is basically complete, at least the structure is. I think we might see some more additions to this in the future such as cranes, but at the moment I think it's looking really cool. Let's take a look at some new parts that have arrived for machines to be added to the new tents. This is apparently part of a gantry crane, similar to what is in the current ring making tent. With the new crane arrival basically identical to the current ring tent, I'm assuming the new tent is for rings and maybe this is the next big step in spooling up the production line. Time for us to see what's been happening with SM3 starting with the nose cone. Here we have the nose cone being attached to a ring, meaning the nose cone section is almost complete. I think the next step for this part of the build would be to add the header tanks which you can see in this video as these go into the tip of the nose cone. Just a quick update on rings, as some rings in a tent have been spotted that look like the missing piece between the nose cone and the tank section for SM3. Now, tank section stacking. At some point since my last episode, the thrust and engine section of SM3 was rolled back into a tent. It's possible this was done so SpaceX can do some hidden work as these rockets have certain components that need to be kept a secret. However, it was recently rolled back out and into the high bay, then stacked with the rest of SM3 to finally form the tank section. Unfortunately, there is no footage of the actual stacking process, so here is a before and after from Elon Musk. Here is the latest SM3 build diagram from Raphael Adami. As you can see, SpaceX have constructed all of the sections for this vehicle. With this, we know that the plan for SM3 is a full structural build, but I don't know if we will see any control services like we did with Mark 1. Given that Musk previously stated only a static fire in short flights are planned with SM3, that might mean that RCS thrusters will be all that's needed for SM3 to lift off, but let's wait and see. Finally, for this build, let's have a look at what's been happening on the testing side of things and what to expect soon with the test area. Not long ago, Starship SM3's tank section was moved out of the high bay and placed onto the roll lift in preparation for its trip down the highway. The road was then closed on March 29th so that the tank section could be rolled out to the test area. After being moved into the area, it was taken off the roll lift and placed onto the test stand. The next step in testing this vehicle is surely a pressure test. As you can see here, there have been more road closure notices recently for further SpaceX testing activities. There's a nice six days allocated this week, so hopefully there's no booms and everything goes smoothly. Finally, let's take a look at what's been happening with SM4 as we might see it being born soon since there has been quite a bit of activity. Behind the new tent being constructed, we have some rings just sitting there, and given that we have seen enough rings that SM3 just needs to be stacked, we can assume that these are for SM4. It also appears that a new nose cone is in the process of being constructed. This little section has been sitting in the construction area for a while now. I haven't shown it before, but I think it might be for SM4. On top of this, there's also some more nose cone parts that have been spotted, so maybe in the coming weeks we'll start to see an SM4 nose cone. 
There have also been some new bulkheads being constructed, so obviously with the SM3 tank being already built, these must be for SM4. Just a week ago, these were still pieces of metal, I believe, so SpaceX, regardless of the current situation, is still pressing ahead with the build of SM4. We might see a reduction in the amount of clips of Starship because of the current situation. Apparently there are now COVID-19 restrictions in place in Boca Chica and so the safety of everybody over there is a top priority. Although this is not expected to affect SpaceX's Starship efforts. Again, I want to say a huge thanks to Mary Boca Chica Girl who provides great Starship footage for the NASA Spaceflight team. Also a huge thanks to S Padre who also provides a lot of launchpad activity. You're all doing phenomenal work but please stay safe. That's it for this episode of SpaceX Show, I hope you enjoyed the video, if you did make sure to hit the like button and leave a comment down below. If you want to stay updated with SpaceX info make sure to subscribe and press the bell icon to get notified when I upload. Thanks for watching and have a great day.